in crisis. Whatever happens, do not fear. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't fear. Get some people to pray. Tell them what it is about. Get some serious guys. Not those who say, I'll pray with you, and that's it. They don't pray. There is nothing impossible if you can have a someone who can ask God. He says, Ask and it shall receive. Knock, it shall be opened. Find and you get. God has not said you chance. He means it. God never lies. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Point number three. How do we deal with our crisis? When you are told this thing has just come apart, you don't know what to do. Hallelujah. Amen. Most of the time, when something happens at our homes, or your workplace, or where you, you do your business, whatever you do, most of the time, we have the temptation of blaming one another. If you, you see, hear somebody saying, if you, you could have done this, this would not have happened. If you could have come early, this thing, this thing would not have been banned. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to tell you, in crisis, it is not time to blame anyone. It is time for faith action. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't blame anybody. As I'm talking, there are people who are blaming their wives right now. Others are blaming their husband. If this money you'd have done this, we would not have wasted it. Amen. Amen. If you make this decision, this business will still be standing. Amen. Amen. In crisis, there's a great temptation to complain and blame one another. And a temptation to avenge oneself. I can also kick back. I can also do this. How can you rise against me? But listen. Hallelujah. Amen. Do not be pulled into arguments and brain. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, there was a time I was in crisis and I was blaming everybody. Then I had a soul search. And I sat and looked at myself. And I said, I will not complain to anybody. Hallelujah. I will wait on the Lord. And I said, I will not fear. You tell us we do this, let us do. Okay. Okay. Let's go. Hallelujah. I will do what you tell me to do. But I will not fight. Hallelujah. Amen. In crisis, sometimes there's that feeling of fighting, especially if it's involving people fighting. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Accept it has happened. But then rise up to take care of it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Encourage yourself in the Lord. And takes action as the Lord instructs you. As the Holy Spirit leads you. I want to tell you this. That the Lord will not only encourage you. But he will save you. From, your, from the Avengers. You become an encouragement. To those afflicted and affected. Hallelujah. If it was not so and so. I would not have been sacked from my place of work. It is so and so who was against me. If it was not so and so. My marriage you'll be standing today. No. No. 
Amen. Amen. Instead of complaining and blaming one another, encourage yourself in the Lord. Strengthen one another in the word of God and pray for one another. Let me talk to couples. If something goes wrong in your house, instead of complaining and blaming one another, instead encourage one another. Yes, we have the money is lost. It will not be gotten back by blaming one another. Hallelujah. Whatever has happened has happened. But the question is, what do we do? Hallelujah. There's a man called David. In 1 Samuel 29. If you read 1 Samuel 28, the whole of it, you can stand it. Samuel, I mean, David had run away, away from Saul. And he gave a pact with an enemy, the king of Philistines. Amen. Amen. He had nowhere to run to. He found himself with the Philistines who are enemies of Israel. Let me tell you something. It's very dangerous to make a coalition or, a, or an agreement or to make a pact with an enemy. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. It's like a hyena becoming a friend with a goat. One day, the hyena may become angry and just decide to eat the, 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 the goat. Hallelujah. Amen. As far as the hyena is satisfied, it's so alright. But the day will be hungry. No, not hungry. The day will be have hunger. So David, so David joined King Akish. They became friends. Do you know what Akish was saying? As far as David is against his people. Hallelujah. Then he can be my friend. When you become an enemy friend, you must be against your own people. Hallelujah. Amen. But what David was very clever. He asked this man to give him a city. And was given the city of Sikra. And David dwelt, dwelt there with his, with his army, with his men. But he would go out and, uh, and strike the enemies of Israel, Americans, and the Philistines, and wipe them out. That no one will come and say the story. Then, then King Akishi will ask him, Where are you from? He will tell him, I'm from destroying the Israelites. <laughs> Cities of Israelites. <laughs> and the, the enemy will be very happy. <laughs> so to cut the story short, <laughs> and they came when David found himself in problem. <laughs> King Akish told him, we are going to Israel. Now join me. We fight your people. I told you an enemy you already stand against you. Hallelujah. They look good. But they, they will make you do something against yourself or your people. Amen. Amen. So David could not refuse. Hallelujah. Amen. So in 1 Samuel 28, David joins Akish to go to Jezreel to fight Israel. How can you feel going to strike your own brothers? But I thank God who is merciful and gracious. When they are on the way going, Hallelujah. Glory to God. The loss of the feast is 
the lords of the citizens, the rulers, they said to King Akish, don't you think when we are in the battle, David may turn against us. May refuse to fight his own people and turn against us in battle. So David was told with his men, go back. Hallelujah. So 1 Samuel 29:11. David lost Ari and to the and departed in the morning. To depart into the land of Philistines. And the Philistines went to Jezreel to fight. So when David and his men returned on the third day, it took them three days to return to their city Sikrag. The Bible says they found Sikrag burned with fire and their wives and their sons and their daughters taken captive. What did you do? If you went home, you find your house is burned down. Your people have been taken. You come and fight this flat on the ashes. And it's not one house, a whole city. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. What a crisis to David and his men. The Bible says, David and the people that were with him lifted their voices and wept until there are no more power to weep. Can you imagine coming to the city like Kenno, finding men weeping, men, not women? Because there were, there were no women, they had been taken captive. Men crying. The Bible says they cried until they did not have power or energy to cry anymore. But let me tell you now what happened. This way I want you to get it. Amen. They wept. Imagine, then after weeping, David's men blamed him. They said, you. You are the one who have made our city to be burned down. You are the one who have made our children and sons to be taken captive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse, in 1 Samuel 30, verse 6, they planned to stone David. What did you do? Yes, all of us are crying. Even my own, even David's family was taken captive. Even his home is burned down. But every man has turned to him now and said, Now we want to stone you. Verse 6 says, David was greatly distressed. For the people spoke of stoning him. Because the soul of all the people was grieved. And every man his sons and for his daughters. Have you ever had people blaming in your family? It's you. And everyone is against you. I'm talking to you who everyone is against right now. Maybe your own family is against you. Your own husband is blaming you. Hallelujah. At one place, everybody is saying, we will not have suffered and a loss. It is you. That's how David was. We will not have lost this property. It is you. So, and his soul died because of you. Hallelujah. Amen. They planned to kill David. But I thank God if the anointing of God is over you, if you have Christ in you, 
Nothing has been planned. You prosper. No weapon fashioned against you prosper. Men will plan to kill you. Men will plan to come and rob you. They will plan many things. But it shall fail. When you got born again, God gave angels to keep you because you are very important to God. You are a son of God and you are a ruler on behalf of heaven here on earth. You know, sometimes you are born but you walk like this. Losers, as if you are losers. No. Hallelujah. There are angels given for you. But the question I want to ask is this. They were all in crisis. David's family was gone. The family of the army of his soldiers was gone. Hallelujah. The question is, by stoning David, could they recover what they have lost? By blaming him, could they receive what they lost? That fight against the Lord, that fight against the Lord, Iyo, Peter Mukonayo Ashamba, Amen. By blaming so and so, we don't solve the problem. You need to come together and agree on how to go about. As a family, sit together. That issue in your family. You need to sit together as husband and wife and talk. Hallelujah. By stoning David, they will just all be destroyed. Hallelujah. Braving one another, one another is just a waste of time. Hallelujah. And avenging oneself will not change the situation. I've seen people who are brave men of God. It did not come. Yes, that man of God, maybe he was praying for that person the whole night. By blaming, you change anything. Pointing fingers does not change the situation. In fact, they will hinder the recovery of what has been lost. And you hear me? When the time you are wasting, you can use that time to recover what you have lost. We are in the year of recovering all. Hallelujah. Let's use our time to recover, not to bring of what has been lost or destroyed. Hallelujah. The time of crisis is not time to sorry oneself. Asking, why God? Why me, God? Why did you allow me to pass through this situation? That will not change the situation. That will not move God to come on your aid. By the time of crisis, it's a time to set yourself to hear God. To get an instruction. Hallelujah. Let's move from David. Let's go to Job. Amen. Job in his crisis. When he destroyed everything, when Satan destroyed everything that he had, including his children, Job did not blame his children, no, his servants. He did not say the servants could have been more vigilant. Why did they allow the enemy to take away the goats and my cows? Somebody will say they were sleeping. How could the goats be stolen? They could have fought the, en the, the en enemy. 
Alleluia. Job did not blame his children. He did not say they should not have planned a party in such a time. They should not, they could not have planned, they should not have planned a party. Alleluia. Remember they were in ha- one house <inaudible> celebrating and having good time <inaudible> when the roof of the house fell and killed them. <inaudible> Job did not say <inaudible> they should not have planned a party at a time like this. <inaudible> you know when something happened he start blaming. <inaudible> Even I'm told so and so not to go. Now why did he go? That's why he has died. That will not change it. It will not change the situation. I don't so and so. Give this, this, whatever. Maybe it's chicken or whatever. Give them whatever. He did not give, they died all. Hallelujah. Amen. All those chickens, the hundreds, mekufa, they are dead. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Job did not blame people. When he had bad news, he bowed himself and worshipped God. The Bible says in Job 1.20, then Job arose and tore his clothes and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshipped. Let me tell you, instead of blaming, fall on your knees, call on God, tell God you are in control. Remember, fear not, God has a plan and he will bring back everything you have lost. Hallelujah. I'm in number what now? Number four. Hallelujah. Consult God. And say consult. Consult God. Hallelujah. Amen. Do not take action without God. You know, when crisis comes, there's a, sometimes a point of urgency. And people make decisions very fast. Hallelujah. Amen. There are people even made a decision to keep people to hospital, which were not supposed to be the right hospital. Hallelujah. Amen. Sometimes you're so quick to take action and say, I'll do this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Consult God. God is not far. God is not saying, make with an appointment with me, I give you next week. No. If today you want to see the president, don't see him. Even your governor. He has to give you an appointment. And there will be two months to come. Sometimes even hospital, you go to Kenya hospital. And you are dying. One time my mother had cancer. And it has it had spread. And the Kenya doctor should hear this. Because it's not right. Hallelujah. Amen. You come. You give a, you are given a day to go. When you go, you are not even examined. You are looked at and I say. We are going to give you an appointment. Come after one month. You are in pain. You are not given even a painkiller. That is sending somebody to his death. Hallelujah. Amen. What am I talking about? They will give you an appointment for next month. And your condition cannot reach next month. And they know it. That is killing people. I'm not against anybody. But I'm saying this as a feedback that people should be concerned about other people. 
Hallelujah. Amen. And I'm not talking only about that hospital. I'm talking about hospitals generally. Hallelujah. Amen. You are given an appointment. I thank God that He does not give you an appointment. God is always ready to hear you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you cry to Him, so in times of crisis, glory to God, cry to Him. Cry to Him. Glory to God. However bad the situation is. Glory to God. Or how urgent it is. Do not lose your heart. Fear not. Inquire of God. Consult God on what to do. Father, what do I do? God always answers. There are many times I found myself and I ask God, what do we do in this? One time I was called in a certain home and there was a woman dying. They told me, come quickly, she's dying. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I reached and surely she was dying. Kicking the last buckets. I did not rush to pray. I told them pray. Everyone pray. But I did not, I mean, I did not run to say anything or to pray in a particular manner. Hallelujah. Amen. The first thing was consulting God. I ask God now what do I do in this situation she has been in hospital hallelujah for so long I thank God for hospitals even Kenyatta hospital I thank God because I'm not saying that they do a very good job glory to God all we need is to improve. Hallelujah. Amen. So she has been she had been in a certain hospital for one week, being treated of Maria. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And she is here dying. She has been brought home with medication. What do I do? I ask God. Do you know what God told me? I thank God for His grace. Do you know what He did? He said, He said, This is not malaria. He said, This is witchcraft. Command black things to come out of her stomach. And within three days, she'll be whole. We are in a crisis here. Somebody is dying. And it takes trust. So I rebuked the spirit of infirmity and commanded the things to come out of her. She began to vomit black things. Hallelujah. Amen. She began to vomit black things. And you know what? I told them how you are whole now. You are healed. And on the third day, I came with the Bible. And she was so healthy. Whoever was dying was living. What if they never consulted God? What if he said, bring an ambulance? We'll take her to hospital. But God has said, this is not a malaria. There is no medicine for witchcraft. Only the power of God can deliver somebody. She would have died before she was taken even out of that house. Hallelujah. Because she was in the process. Glory to God. But when you consult God in crisis, God intervenes. Hallelujah. Do not be hasty. Do not fear. 
If I could have feared and panicked, I would not have had God. Fear blocks your ears from hearing God. Are you in crisis? Run to God. Consult God. Don't go alone. Let the Holy Spirit read you and take you through. Hallelujah. I decree to you, you are coming out of your crisis. That situation you have been having, with maybe you have been jobless for many years. That's your crisis. I decree to you today, God will make a way in the name of Jesus. I decree the recovery of what you have lost. There is a God who brings recovery from crisis. He will lift you up and you will be a monument. Whoever you see you will say, God has done it. Hallelujah. But agree with me. It is not time to complain. Don't complain. Even when see things happening about the country. Pray. Consult God. Amen. See you next time. We shall continue with that word of taking action. I've seen wherever you take action with God. Hallelujah. Say your neighbor, me with God. All things are possible. Me with God. There is nothing impossible. Okay, tell him, me and you. And God. Anything can happen anytime. For whatever you shall agree when you pray, God will do it. God will do it. I will pray for you next time. But I will be praying for you in my private prayers. That is my viewer. My viewer. You can write to me over what you are going through. And we will pray with you. God will lift you from your crisis. God bless you so much. And keep you. See you next time. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.